Hi, welcome to Intro to State Machines in JavaScript, part three. Uh, this is part of a series that I'm doing on state machines. And in part three, in this video, we're gonna be talking about handling user input. So data coming from users, like in this form, for example. Um, and we're also continuing our React app so let me change this to part three, so you're not confused. And we're just gonna pick up right where we left off. So let's just dive in. So you'll recognize change handlers uh, just like in any other React app. So let's start building one. Okay, so now when we type anything in our input, this change handler is gonna be called, and uh, which is this function here. So in normal React, uh, without a state machine, you would normally set the, uh, the state of the React app here. But since we're doing, since we're using a state machine, instead of uh, react state, there is a property on state machine called context. Context is an object that will hold your values. So I'm gonna initialize these Sorry, I forgot a comma there. I'm gonna initialize our form values as empty strings. And so now we need a way to update those values in our state machine. So we're gonna do something similar as we did on handle submit. We're gonna send an event. And we'll call it input change. And we also have the option to send a uh, event object with this event. So we'll send the, let's see, we'll send the name, we'll have a name property, and that will be the field name that is being updated. And we'll get that from the event. So, target.name is coming from this input field name property. And those are the same names that are gonna be on our context in the state machine. That way we could use one function to handle both of our inputs. And then we're gonna have another property here called value, which is gonna be the value of our input. Okay, so now we have a change handler that's calling this event, input change, and it's also sending uh, this uh, event object here that we just created. Okay, so let's create this event now. So we go back to our state machine and Outside of our states, we're going to add another property called on. And on is an object. Did this wrong. On is going to be an object. And the property is the event name. And inside the event, the, the event name value is another object. And this, this object has a property called actions. And in this actions is where we're going to change the context values of our state machine. And the way that we do that is with a function called assign, which comes from xState library that we've been using to manage our state machine. 
and assign is going to take a callback, which takes the current context and the event object that we just created. And what we could do here is we're going to return the new context. So this is similar to the react set state function. Uh, we could either return a partial update on the context or we could turn, return the whole context to update the whole context. So here we're just going to do a partial update. And what we want to do is get the name from our event and we'll update that with the value that we send back. So if you remember, this event here is going to be this value that we've just created, this object. So it's going to have a name property and a value. And the name is going to be coming from our input name attribute. So imagine we update our name input. This is going to be name here, and then the new value that we just typed in. And that will update this name property on our context. OK, so you can see that we, we're not really using um, our current context that is being passed in. Uh, we're only using the event. If you want to, say, for example, uh, increment a property on the context, you would need like current context. So that's what you would probably use this parameter for. OK, so now we have an event that is updating our context. Now we want to take our value and bind it to our input. So just like any other React project, we want to bind this to the current state of this input. But how do we do that? So if you remember in our first video, I mean our second video, part two, uh, we interpreted our state machine to create a service out of it. The service allows us to start, stop, and send events to our state machine. And on each transition of our state machine, whenever the state machine gets updated, we have this callback function here that gets called. So on this event on transition, we're getting the newest state of our state machine here. So we could bind that to our React state. So here, when uh, I'm going to create a simple state for this React component, and I have a property called current, which is going to be the current state machine, and I initialize it by using this initial state property, which comes from our state machine. And here, what I will do is call set state. And I'll update our state machine with the next state machine that gets updated after uh, we update it, either on a state transition or on a context change, which is what we're doing here in our handle change function. So let me get that out of my state here. So now when we're rendering our component in the render function, I'm getting our current state.
and we have a property called context. And our context value name. And I will repeat that for our card. Okay. So now we have everything wired up, hopefully, and I should be able to type in here and have our current value updated. And it is not updating. I wonder why. Okay, I figured out what was wrong. When I was first typing in the card number, I'm typing right now and it's not working, but when I'm typing in name, it's actually updating both. And so what I did was I'm using the same value for name and card. So let me just update that real quick. Okay. So everything's working now. Quick change. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> um, okay, so now to finish this off, I think the, I think what we should do now is handle the user input when we submit. And luckily that's, that's really easy to do. So when I press this button, I send a submit event here. So I'm sending this submit event to, the, to our state machine service. And on the submit event, we transition into a loading state. And on our loading state, we're invoking this service here. And our function that is creating our fake HTTP request takes the current context as a parameter. So if we turn this into a multi-line function, I'll log the context there so we can see it, but we'll have access to our current our current context here because it's automatically being passed in. So try it out. Okay, and you can see that our current context is being logged here. And then you could do anything you want with that. You could pass it to your HTTP request and take a card payment. And uh, that's it. I think that's enough for this video. Now you know how to handle user input and take data from your UI into your state machine. Um, thanks for watching, appreciate it. If you uh, found this useful, or if you, if you do find it useful, please like or give a positive comment and let me know what you think of state machine so far. Is it too much to work with? Um, have you or would you ever use state machines in a real production or client app? I'm still on the fence it does seem like it's a lot extra work, but I don't have the experience yet to know if that extra work is worthwhile in the end. But it is fun to learn these new tools and share them with you. So please let me know if you enjoy it too. And I may be doing a part four. And if I do, my plan so far is to refactor the state machine, make it a little bit more manageable into bite-sized chunks. Uh, maybe even refactor using React hooks and even attempting to add state machine configuration dynamically. For example, can we dynamically add context? That would be kind of fun to figure out. Anyways, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Again, please like or comment. Let me know. It, le it helps me to know uh, what kind of videos to make in the future. Appreciate it. Bye.